Hi, my name is Ryan Lane, and welcome to my review channel. So for today's movie, I will be reviewing Fast X, directed by Louis Leterrier and starring <gasps> Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, Charlize Theron, Jason Momoa, <gasps> Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris Nally, Emmanuel, John Cena, and a whole bunch more, folks. Oh yeah, Alan Richardson and Rita Moreno. Anyway, uh, some time has passed since the events of Furious 9, the Furious Saga. Vin, uh, Dominic Toretto, uh, played by Vin Diesel, has now settled into his home life and is now letting uh, uh, the other family members uh, handle the big missions. And so he has now decided to teach his son the fine art of driving it like you stole it, baby. Anyway, uh, all things are going well. That is until uh, Dante Reyes, son of the late Hernan Reyes, decides to come out seeking revenge. And I know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, who's Hernan Reyes? Don't worry, the film will clue you in. In the very beginning, you don't have to worry about being confused. Eh, for the most part, but I'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, and so, being called back to the action once again, Dominic Toretto uh, fuels up his car and gears up for hilariously uh, improbable vehicular mayhem. So, the cast, both new and old, are, all give pretty good performances, although some have clearly much better material to work with than others. Jason Momoa is clearly having a ball as a sociopathic murderer who has the emotional maturity of a four-year-old and the eccentricities of a rich man. He's kind of hilarious to watch. You know, he'll be like, do you like ballet all while? And he likes to, you know, uh, talk to corpses in a hilarious manner. He's the best part of the movie in terms of performances. And then you have Alan Richardson as Ames, the new leader of the agency. Yeah, he's clearly overqualified for the role. I've heard, you know, he's good in uh, Jack, the Jack Reacher TV show, and he definitely feels uh, underutilized and overqualified for his kind of underwritten role in this movie. Everyone else all does give a pretty good job, too. Brie Larson's good. Charlize Theron is good. All the actors have great chemistry with each other, and they all seem, at least on screen at least, uh, the behind-the-scenes drama would imply otherwise. All the characters get along well, and they have good zingers. One, there's one particularly funny joke referencing the outer space escapades that Rome... Roman and uh, the tech guy, I, I, sorry, I'm blanking on his name at the moment, uh, experienced in the previous movie. So that, that was pretty fun. It, however, the film doesn't exactly make the great use of its chemistry. Again, more on that later. So the directing for Fast X feels surprisingly haphazard, which is a weird sentence I never I thought I'd say about a Fast and Furious movie. Because these movies, well, again, they're not exactly Shakespeare, but they've always been at least technically competent, especially when it comes to driving sequences. In this movie, the ed it's mainly the editing and the camera movement. Like everything at certain points in the film, the camera will speed up and the frame rate will like go super fast at, at super speed and, and time. It's like, I don't know, it just feels off. Plus the editing, it's not, it's not as atrocious as, oh, say, Ant-Man, Quantum Mania, but it's clearly noticeable. Like, I feel like the, uh, the shots need to linger on their subjects for just a little bit longer instead of, because it feels, it's like the camera should have just held, you know, just a second. Heck, not, maybe not even a second longer. But thankfully, the editing doesn't ruin the action scenes. The action scenes are still creative improbable and hilarious at times to watch like uh john cena's uh glorious gun car is awesome to watch in all its explosive glory so yeah again the action scenes thankfully have not been ruined what does kind of ruin them is the plotting 
after a mission in Rome goes spectacularly sideways, uh, Dominic Toretto and the rest of the family are all split up across the globe. They're working together to try and figure out who Dante is and how to take him down. And all the while, you know, they're meeting up with every character that's ever appeared in these movies, plus their grandma. Not a joke. And it all feels like the film is going to build up to this big climax, you know, where all the film has like a big Avengers Endgame-esque moment. And yet, that doesn't happen. Instead, what happens is a, we end up with an anticlimactic ending that drops the ball on multiple levels. Without going too much into spoilers, the ending pulls a, oh, haha, you thought you were getting an ending, but you're going to have the sequel if you want an ending. Tee hee hee, please give us more money. Plus, it kind of makes a complete mockery of death as uh, more of an obstacle and less of a, you know, storytelling altering event. Although, to be fair, I think uh, death had already become an obstacle, mere obstacle to overcome, a, like, two movies ago but still it, it, the end the appearance the ending does kind of slap the audience in the face in terms of emotional investment weird sentence i know what to say about the fast and furious movies but still i mean there the bar isn't super high for these movies but but there is a bar nonetheless so while fast x does offer you know fun quippy performances and some characteristically uh, improbable action scenes. It unfortunately also offers uncharacteristically sloppy plotting and directing. So with all that in mind, I will be giving Fast X two and a half out of five stars. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. If you like this review and would like to see more like it, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And for today's comment section prompt of the day, what is your favorite Fast and Furious movie and why?